What's up guys, welcome to Found Flicks. On this Ending Explained, we'll be checking out the psychological thriller Shut In, starring Naomi Watts. Now you might be wondering, what the heck is Shut In? But I've had quite a few requests for it, so here we are. So save yourself 90 minutes and have everything explained in a nice compact package by watching this video. The movie is all about the relationship between Naomi Watts' Mary and her stepson Stephen, aka Stranger Things' Charlie Heaton. Stephen has always loved Mary deeply, but as Stephen grew older, he became more hostile and unstable. In the opening scene, Stephen is being taken to a new school for difficult to manage kids like himself. Mary feels guilty about sending him away, but his behavior has become unmanageable, and she feels he isn't really her child anymore. But before they make it to the school on the way, Stephen gets upset, blaming his father for taking him away from Mary, telling him he hates him and causes their car to crash headfirst into a semi. Stephen's father is killed in the accident, and Stephen is left in a comatose state, confined to a wheelchair, not moving or talking. Since the accident, six months Months has passed and Mary has been taking care of Stephen, dealing with his day-to-day -day needs, like feeding and bathing him. She's worried for his well-being and isn't willing to spend too much time away from him. So each day, she sticks him in front of the TV while she goes to work next door as a child psychiatrist. Here we meet a patient of Mary's, a young deaf boy named Tom that she has taken a shine to. He too is troubled and we hear he broke a kid's arm at school, and as a result is being sent off to a school in Boston. But Mary believes that the work she has been doing with him is helping with his issues. She sees her own son's old bad behavior reflected through Tom, but believes there is still a chance to help him, unlike Stephen. In fact, she seems to have given up on Stephen entirely and intends to send him off to a care center. She reveals this to a colleague, Dr. Wilson, via Skype. She finds herself unable to deal with what her son has become and feels that she lost him completely on the day of the wreck. To her, he is no longer her son and is merely a body that she washes and feeds. Well, that's a little harsh. Then we see Mary giving Charlie a bath and it seems fairly normal at first, but she shoves his head underwater attempting to drown him. What? Of course, it's just a dream and Mary wakes up in the bathtub having passed out. This is the first of many dream fake outs in the movie where you think something interesting is happening? Nope. Just a dream. Mary gets out of the tub to investigate some strange noises coming from outside the house and eventually discovers Tom curled up in her car, having smashed the window to get in. He must also have some kind of attachment to Mary to hide at her place to avoid going to Boston. And as I said, Mary is basically obsessed with helping Tom. She speaks to Tom's caretaker on the phone, trying to convince her to let Tom stay with her. And Mary is suddenly locked inside. By the time she gets out, Tom is gone, with the front door left wide open to the winter night. Mary holds on to the hope that she can find him, but chances seem slim he would survive the weather. As the days go by, Tom is still missing and Mary becomes increasingly plagued by strange dreams, seeing Stephen as well as Tom. She is unable to explain what she's seeing, even considering that it could be ghosts. But Dr. Wilson assures her that there's no such things as ghosts and considers that the voiceless child in her dreams might be a representation of Stephen. Dr. Wilson is quite concerned for Mary's mental state, believing she might have parasomnia that's causing all these visions, and asks her to send blood work over so he can prescribe some medication. After their conversation, Mary walks through a hallway carrying some laundry and notices a credenza is blocking a tiny door. Uh-oh! You've heard it from me before, folks. Never open tiny doors! Mary finds this out for herself later when she is awoken by a door slamming sound. We see her vision is blurry and she groggily stumbles down the hallway, seeing that Stephen is not in his bed. She heads back to the tiny door opening it and child's hands emerge out hacking her. She closes the evil door and proceeds to pass out on the floor until the next morning. When she checks on Stephen, she notices scratches on his face and starts to think this all might not be a dream after all. Determined to find out what is going on, Mary starts to hack open a locked cupboard in the basement. But she's interrupted when Dr. Wilson calls her with the results of her blood test. From the results, he finds that she has been taking prescription pills, in particular benzodiazepines, a powerful psychoactive drug. Mary has no idea what he's talking about, saying she hasn't been taking any prescription drugs. Mary is more interested in that locked door in the basement, and she leaves, appearing to hang up on Wilson. But maybe not. Even though it looks like she definitely closes the window, the call continues after Mary leaves. And shockingly, we see that Stephen's wheelchair is empty, and in our big reveal, Stephen himself passes through the frame. So he's behind all the shenanigans, of course. 
He wasn't catatonic at all, apparently, and it sure seems like he's walking just fine. But how is this possible? We'll get to that in one sec. In the basement, Mary gets a door open and finds Tom hidden inside, and he's alive. Obviously, Stephen was the one who took Tom and locked Mary in the room when she first found him. However, her rescue attempt is thwarted as Stephen captures her, and we find out a bit more about how all of this happened. Stephen has Mary tied up in the bathroom with her mouth taped over, and is giving her a bath, singing the same song she did for him when he was getting a bath. Well, that's certainly creepy. Hmm. At least he's her stepson, or it would be really weird. No, it's still really weird. First of all, we find out that he was never catatonic and he was merely pretending the entire time. He reveals that when he woke up in the hospital a week after the accident, he didn't talk or move, but never said he couldn't. So he pretended to be catatonic just so Mary would take care of him because he doesn't want to be away from her. As we see, that's what happened in the movie with Mary's entire world revolving around taking care of Steven. And his perfect world suddenly had a new threat when Tom showed up as Steven feared Tom would replace him as Mary's son, which he naturally can't have happen. We have to assume Steven was walking around at night this whole time, but it was Tom showing up that triggered him into psycho killer mode. So he locked Tom in the crawl space, waiting for him to starve to death. In order to keep Mary from waking up and hearing Tom in the walls, Steven has been giving Mary dosages of his powerful medicine, which results in all of her crazy dreams and overall mental instability she's been dealing with. But the particular time when Mary opened the tiny door was different. That wasn't a dream. Steven says she is becoming more tolerant to the drugs and that he didn't give her enough of a dosage that time. It's because of this that she wakes up when hearing the slamming sound and why her vision looks all wobbly and stuff in that scene. But she was actually awake there, leading her to believe that there was something really going on. Steven gives Mary another pill, leaving her in the bath as he goes to finally kill Tom. But Mary uses soap to loosen the ropes and gets free from her restraints and throws up the pill. Meanwhile, Dr. Wilson furiously drives to Mary's house, now also aware of what's been going on with Steven. Hopefully he makes it in time. And his entire arc here plays out like a third-rate version of the Scatman Carruthers character from The Shining. He makes it to the house, ready to help save the day, but gets taken out, stabbed by Steven pretty much as soon as he shows up. Oh well, at least he tried. I guess. Mary heads into the basement, finding Stephen guarding over a tied up Tom. Stephen reiterates that he thinks that Mary wants to replace him with Tom and believes that it's because of Tom that Mary is sending Stephen to the care center. Mary attacks him with the butt of a shotgun and gets Tom free. She tries to trick Stephen by leaving footprints backtracking in the snow to make it look like she ran away and wipes off Tom's dirty fingerprints that were left on the banisters. Then the two hide in the closet and wait for the whole thing to blow over. But her brilliant ruse lasts all of five seconds as Stephen notices is the snowy evidence left behind from when Mary hit her shoes. Wow, a very well thought out plan. Great job there. Steven makes his way around the house, nailing up windows to prevent Mary from getting out. After another encounter, Mary breaks the front door open and she and Tom sprint off into the forest, pursued by Steven with a hammer. More lame The Shining homages. Yes! They make it to a nearby lake that Mary took Steven to as a child and Tom jumps onto the dock. Oh, and I'm not sure why the lake isn't even a little bit frozen here. There was supposedly a huge storm, and this is winter in Maine, but there's no freezing going on here whatsoever. Mary tries to defend herself from Stephen with an oar, but he overtakes her and he turns his attention to drowning Tom. As he holds Tom under the water, Mary sneaks up behind him, whacking him on the back of the head with a hammer. Stephen collapses into the water, blood flowing out from his wound, dead. Well, thank goodness that's all over. Or is it? Yes, it is. In the final scene, Mary and Tom are together approaching an adoption center. So Mary will be making Tom her new son officially after all. Well, isn't that sweet? Not really, since she did in the end replace her own son with Tom, just like Steven said she would. Yes, Steven was definitely bonkers, but to me it seemed like Mary should have actually tried to get Steven help once she realized that he wasn't catatonic all this time. I don't know, she could have just locked him up in the basement and called the authorities instead of killing him. It's weird that she feels so much guilt throughout the movie over her choice to send Steven away in the first place, but when it comes down to it, she really had given up on him. She saw that with Tom, she could have a son again, and at least try not to let this one get too screwed up. It feels like the ending is supposed to be positive, but I'm not so sure actually. The whole thing just rubs me the wrong way for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's just me. That about covers explaining everything that was going on with Mary's character and making sense of the twist of how Steven not being catatonic can make any sense. It's still all a bit ridiculous though. What did you guys think of Shut In and its ending? Would you try to save Steven or would you go hammer time on him? And if you have any other movies or TV show endings you want me to explain, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.